Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I wanna talk a little bit about how to use Annotate in Django. So a couple of videos ago, I talked about how to use Aggregate and Annotate is somewhat similar. You're going to use a lot of the same functions for both, but they have different purposes. So for Aggregate, what happens is you kind of condense all the data in a particular table or multiple tables down to a single value. So for example, you can count all the rows in a table, you can get the average value of some column in the table and it returns one value. Value. Well, with annotate, you don't reduce everything to one value. In fact, you get pretty much the same results that you would without the annotate. But what annotate does is it kind of aggregates across different rows and it appends that result to the individual rows that you get in return. So I think it's a little difficult to explain. So I'll show you in this video and I'll just show you the raw queries that are being generated because it uses a group by and as you know, group by kind of combines multiple rows that you can get from a result and it does something with all those rows. So for example, in my case, I have cities and countries. So if I were to group by country, that means for every country I can do something. So for every country I can get the maximum of the population of all the cities that I have in the database. I can get the average population. I can get the minimum population. I can count the number of cities I have because I'm grouping by the country. So for every country, I do the same operation and it's confined to those countries only. So in my model, in my database, I have the following countries. I have 18 countries. And then I also have a table called cities. You can ignore the uh, plural part of this. It's not right and I didn't change it but you get the idea. So in my database, I have 26 cities. So some of these cities are in the same country. So for example, Las Vegas, New York, and I believe I have one more in the United States. Do I? Hmm, I don't see another one. But Manchester and London are in the UK. Um, we have... What's another good one? We have Chiang Mai in Bangkok. That is in Thailand. And there are a few other ones. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. But Cairo and Alexandria are in Egypt. So I have a few duplicates here. And the idea is I'm going to uh, perform annotate over certain countries so I can get data about the cities in that country. So here I will start up my shell. So python manage.py and then shell. And I'll import the two models that I have. So from example.models import city and country. And by the way, here's what the code looks like. So if you saw my aggregation video, then this code is pretty similar. I added a country here. And of course, there is a relationship between the city and the country. So each city belongs to a particular country, and then I don't have anything beyond that. So what I'll be doing is I'll be kind of combining the two to figure out information based off the country, as you'll see in just a moment. So I have city and country imported. And another thing that I'll have to import are some functions that I will use to perform the aggregation within the, the group uh, that I'm annotating for. So from Django.db.models, I can import stuff like counts. I can import min, max, and average. And there are some others, but I'll just use these four as an example. So now to look at the results, uh, let's say countries equals country.objects all, and this is spelled wrong. There we go. So if I look at countries, I see a query set and it has all the countries that I have. If I did something similar for cities, so city.objects all, I have all the cities that I have in my database. So if I were to look at an individual city or individual country, here's what I would see. So cities, I cannot spell cities for some reason. So cities of zero, I get Shanghai. And if I look at all the fields that are in this object for Shanghai, uh, so vars and cities. I get ID, name, population, and country ID. So really what I'm concerned with for the most part are the name and the population. So if I do the same thing for countries, so countries zero, and that gives me the United States. And if I look at the vars here, uh, this is going to have a little less, so. Uh, it just has a name. 
because that's how my model is set up. So nothing too interesting about the country. It's just that the country is needed because each city is within a particular country. So now if I wanted to find out some information about those countries through the city model, I can do that using annotate. So if I do something like, um, let's see, min, I'll call this min pop. I'll do city objects and then I will do annotate. So this is kind of similar to how I use aggregate. So if I wanted to find the minimum population for all the cities in my database, I would use aggregate and I would have one value returned. But since I'm using annotate, things are going to work a little differently. So I'll use min and then I'll reference the population. So min population and we'll see what happens. So min pop returns all the cities again. And let's see what it looks like for the first one. So Shanghai. I see an ID, a name, a population, a country ID, and I also see a population min. Well, if you notice, the population and the population min are exactly the same. And the reason why is, is because it's trying to group by the city. And when you try to group by the city, in this case, with one model, you're just going to get each individual city. So it's like you're performing some kind of aggregation over one row. And that's not very interesting because we already know what the minimum population for Shanghai is. It's equal to the exact population. So what is more interesting is when we bring two models into the picture. So instead of using city, I'm going to use country. So I'll call min pop again. So min pop country and then objects annotate uh, min and because I don't have a population column in my country model I have to reference it through that foreign key that I have so I use the name of the model that the foreign key is on so in this case city it's going to be lowercase and then dunder and then you get the actual field name or the column name so city and then population. And now if I look at MIMPOP, I see all the countries that I have in the database. And if I look at the results of one of the countries, so MIMPOP for the United States, so that's gonna be the first one here. I see the ID, the name, the city, and now I see population min. And now this value has more significance because instead of looking at one row in the case of the cities, now I'm looking at all the cities that are in the United States. I'm comparing them and I'm figuring out what the minimum population is. And like I said, I believe I only have two cities in the United States in my database. Uh, let's see, New York and Las Vegas. So obviously Las Vegas is a lot smaller than New York. So the population for New York that I have in here is over 8 million. And then the population for Las Vegas is 648,000. So obviously 648,000 is a lot smaller than 8 million. So that's why I get this value as the population min. So if I did something similar, but I would say max population, I'll just change this to max. And then I'll change this to max. And then I do the same thing with the first result. And I need to actually use max here, not min. So max. And now we see the population max down here is 8,622,698. And that's because it's now looking at New York because out of all the cities that I have in the United States, in this particular case, only two, I get a max value of 8 million. So let's look at another country and do another thing. So do I have any countries in here that have three cities? Like I had to go through and manually add everything. So I kind of, I got bored after adding a few cities. So I want to see if I have any countries with three cities in them. So we have Barcelona, I saw. And then do I have Madrid? I have Madrid, but I don't have any other ones. So Indonesia, Chile, Let's see, Egypt, Morocco, Spain, Ethiopia, Nigeria, Russia, China. I think I have, let's see, I have Shanghai. Shenzhen. 
you know, I don't think I have any with three cities. So I guess we'll just have to use the example of two cities. But um, if I used a case where I only had one city, uh, so for example, if I use Lima, what I can do is I can do something like this. <clears throat> so if I do country objects and then annotate, or let's do the filter first. So filter, and I will say the name of the country is equal to uh, Chile, and then annotate, give me the max population. And let's see, Chile is in a country. Oh, that's because it's Peru, not Chile. My geography is messed up, so I'll use Peru. I should have known that. Okay, so I get the country Peru here. And if I look at the results directly, so I'll just assign this to Peru. And I need to add an equal sign. Vars of Peru. And I need the first results, even though there's one. And I see the population max is over 8 million. And if I do the same thing, but I use min instead of max, we'll see that I get the same exact value because I only have one city for Peru in the database. So if I were to go back to one of the countries that has multiple, uh, I can do something like uh, China. And then instead of min, let's just say counts. And I don't need to count the population. So I'll just count the number of cities. And I'll assign this to China. And then if I look at the first result, VARS of China, I get two. So it's telling me that the number of cities in the database is two. And if I take a look at this raw query, so china.query, and this should be stir. So stir china.query should return the exact query that's being used. So we see that it is selecting from country and it's joining the city table here. And then what it's doing is it's filtering by the name of the country, so China, and then it's grouping by the country. So it's because it's grouping by the country, it's going to take all the cities that have the same country and put them together in a group. And it's going to perform operations on that group. So, of course, you can expand this to whatever you need to. But the idea is, you know, you're going to have at least two models that are involved and whatever thing that you're aggregating over the group, it gets appended to the results for each object that gets returned. So in this particular case, uh, it gets appended to city underscore count, which is two, but it can also be city population. And Django is going to name that for you. So that's all I wanted to cover with annotation in this video. Um, I know it can be a little bit of a tricky topic, and I'll probably cover it again in the future. But um, if you have any questions about it, you can always ask me, and I'll try to answer it in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more about Django, I have a few Django courses on my website. So just go to prettyprinted.com. There's going to be a link in the description. I have, I believe, three Django courses. So understanding Django, um, intro to Django, and Django database essentials. So you can check those out uh, after you finish watching this video and see if you enjoy the structure of the videos and you learn a little more than you do from watching a single YouTube video. It's like a bundle of videos instead of a single video. So like I said, if you have any questions, just leave a comment now below. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.